Ego lifting is a branch of fitness that has exploded onto the fitness scene recently with the likes of Mikey May Be Me leading the charge. I first reacted to his lifts about a year ago and I was immediately taken over with intrigue. So I decided to hold the first ever Ego Olympics. Lifters would be judged on three criteria, how much load they were lifting, the effort of the lift and the creativity of the lift. My viewers voted for three rounds and we had a champion, Brian Rosenberg, or Deadliest Lift as many know him by. This version of Ego Lifter I'm talking about is more about the entertainment value of the lift. This lifter has experience and a ton of strength to boot. Just to be clear, when I say Ego Lifter, I mean this. Not this. The purpose of these set of ego lifters is actually quite pure. They know they are putting on a performance, they know the perceived danger, and they recognize the negative implications of an ego lift, but they perform it anyway. Deadliest Lift shows the purity of it all when he vehemently trolls the pedants and armchair warrior form Nazis of the world. It is his purpose, and he's getting stronger by the day while always loving his training. This excerpt from his Instagram displays his overall thesis on the gen pop form police culture. Form is a neat, ubiquitous rallying cry of the beginners who haven't yet crossed the Dunning-Kruger peak. I'm here to contend that form is not what anyone needs, it's technique. Technique is the sum total of everything you are doing when you execute a lift, conscious and subconscious, everything. It's what makes the lift. Form is just the visual manifestation of your lift as an outside observer sees it. Form is a 2D rendering of a 3D object, a shadow cast on the wall. It's an incomplete perspective that is only derived from technique, not a complete representation. You cannot observe someone's form and understand everything that is going on with their technique. Form is not how they are lifting the weight, only what it looks like. So if we look at what Deadliest Lift has said, maybe we can make some further assumptions. We could probably say that without technique, the lift is impossible. Without form, the lift is improbable. Meaning that we as a spectator may view a completed maximum effort lift and notice form breakdowns, but we haven't observed the practice technique to get to the lift in question. The singular lift was completed, but the form wasn't there. This is where ego lifters like Deadliest Lift draw their energy from. These gentlemen try to move beyond their form to accomplish something that is improbable. Now this isn't safe for many, but is simply a finger to point back at the general population's misunderstanding between form and technique. Form is dictated by load and sometimes by repetitions. If you lift too heavy or too many reps, your form may fail you. Breakdowns in form are where you see slow lifts, rounded backs, etc. They are indications of lack of fitness or preparedness in a given area. So with this in mind, we can usually tell novice and hobbyist lifters to not have their form break down. However, when the masses see someone with experience exactly like deadliest lift in this situation or elite level of strength doing something where their form potentially breaks down, they usually equate this with lack of technique and then ensuing danger to the lifter. When the reality, as shown by this select group of ego lifters, is that the technique has been built off of near decades of training. Look, I'm not saying form is not important. I'm more saying that form is oftentimes a crutch for beginners or the armchair warriors. At some point you need to train, make mistakes, and then make adjustments. Sometimes the form police ideology creates a paralysis by analysis effect. There is nuance to this game. We need to take steps to maintain it.